This is a drop of the future. Yes, it's small, but as we know from the past, small steps can lead to giant leaps. This is a drop of synthetic fuel, and it's about to make history. Synthetic fuel is not new. We have been producing it with the help of fossil resources. Now we can present a revolutionary step. We've made a 500-litre batch of commercial-grade synthetic aviation fuel with CO2, renewable power and water. And we have actually let a passenger plane fly with it, the first worldwide. We all agree that the aviation industry needs to become more sustainable, but it has to reduce its impact on the environment. Sustainable aviation fuels will be part of the answer. Hundred years ago, our world changed radically by the introduction of aviation. We entered a new era, an era of innovation and technology. The world became accessible for the mass. And today we're at the brink of a new era again. We're shifting gear, not faster, but more sustainable. And aviation plays a key role. Innovation is essential in reaching these goals, and that's exactly what we're good at in the Netherlands. Aviation is one of the most difficult segments in society to make carbon neutral. Now, having a solution that works in a test tube is one thing, but having a solution that you can apply at industrial scale is quite something different. And that's what we're very good at at Shell. We've got deep expertise in scaling technology, built up over many decades. So now we've made 500 liters of kerosene out of water, CO2 and renewable power. Important step, we're very proud of it. There's still a lot of work ahead of us to make this commercially viable, but at Shell we're up to that challenge. And this is how synthetic fuel is made. Meet the electrolyzer. This installation provides the hydrogen part of the sustainable aviation fuel. It splits water into hydrogen and oxygen. The unit is powered by the solar panels on the roof and Dutch wind turbines. The resulting hydrogen is one of the key ingredients for building the kerosene molecules. The second ingredient is carbon atoms. The CO2 used in the process is recycled CO2 from the Shell Pernis refinery and CO2 originating from the fermentation of agricultural residues. By using CO2 from industry or captured from the atmosphere, we limit emitting new CO2 into the atmosphere. As CO2 itself contains almost no energy, it needs upgrading. This is done by removing its oxygen atoms. Combining the hydrogen and CO2 at high temperature causes a chemical reaction and bam! We get a gas mixture of CO and H2 called a syngas. The next step is performed by this beauty. We use a catalyst to stitch together the carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms from the CO and H2 molecules in the syngas so that they can form liquid hydrocarbons. It looks a bit like white candle wax. But wax is not what we want. So we go on to the next step, hydroprocessing. The molecules of the wax are cut at nanoscale into the desired length for use in aviation fuel. As a company, we want to be a climate neutral business by 2050 or sooner in step with society. And the aviation sector is a very important customer for us. This technology provides a stepping stone towards synthetic kerosene, synthetic jet fuel. By combining blue hydrogen with recycled carbon, for example, you can make a jet fuel with a lower carbon footprint. And when more green power becomes available later, we can substitute with green hydrogen. And we're very proud that we don't have to do this alone. We work together with all our industry players and, of course, with the government and to provide the right policies and incentives. And, of course, we also need to work together with our customers. 500 litres of synthetic kerosene are not nearly enough to fly a commercial aircraft. And regulations at this moment permit blending up to 50% synthetic kerosene. So we have to add traditional kerosene. Off to Schiphol then. Today is a wonderful and proud moment. We've become SKLM 102 years, and we've come that by pioneering and partnerships. Standing here today and fueling this first ever flight operated with synthetic fuel or partly synthetic fuel is another demonstration of pioneering and partnership. And I'm really glad and proud we can do this together. 
We have the ambition in 2030 to have 14% of all our departures from Amsterdam fueled with sustainable fuel. And today is just another big step of a great beginning of making the industry more sustainable towards the future. Ladies and gentlemen, very good afternoon. We'll operate this flight using 500 liters of synthetic kerosene. The world is connected through aviation and for future generations to keep flying, we have to get rid of the carbon. It's as simple and as difficult as that. Sustainable aviation fuels are essential to get to a net zero aviation sector in 2050. At Schiphol, we want to be a front runner and we will be. But for such a challenge, you need innovation, collaboration with partners, you need investments and regulation. And I'm very proud that today we take an important step towards the production of new synthetic fuels. Einstein supposedly said, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking that we used when we created them. The shape of aircrafts will change. Hydrogen and electrification may become fuels of the future. And today we're taking a new step forward. A new step towards sustainable aviation. We're not there yet. There's still a long way to go to make this a commercially viable route. But it's a great step in the right direction. <laughs>